So yesterday, DC Comics was trending, but for all the wrong reasons. See, instead of it being a product or something to be proud of, oh, it's massive layoffs in the works. When I say layoffs, too, I'm not talking about general staff positions. I'm talking about upper echelon employees, with no one being safe from all the cuts that are to come. I mean, we're talking a loss of confidence so great that you're not only getting rid of your upper echelon employees, but you're bringing in new general manager, quote-unquote, from the world of esports. I mean, think about what that says about the comic book industry right now. Now, as expected, they are blaming all of this on the beer bug, and while that is partially true, it is by no means the end-all, be-all. See, these are the same people that have decided to repeatedly denigrate their consumers, calling them ista telling them that their money is not wanted and on. These are also the same people that have decided to condemn other creators. And you know what? That combined with lackluster products and diminishing sales, yet yeah, that will kill a company. But see, all of these people, they've been living in denial. So that's what we're going to deny them today. We're going to deny them the denial that they've had. We're going to show them the reasons that they lost this. And we've been saying this stuff since 2017. So hey there. Now, I'm not going to mention this in every video, but this this is the right place to do so. We have a comic, link is in the description, and the same people that see their market falling apart, they're the ones that tried to lock us out of industry. Why? Because we talked about this kind of stuff, and we said things like respect your consumers. But that's okay. We don't need them. We need you. So check that out, share it if you would, and thank you in advance. So I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but the comic book industry has essentially been running as a charity for quite some months, with you as the taxpayer footing the bill. Here's a list of Payment Protection Program, or PPP, loans, and if you read this about the loans, the loans were to help with the payroll to keep people employed, with the loans forgivable if 60% of the money went to payroll. So basically, as a taxpayer, you paid for these companies here. The big ones actually aren't listed under this either, but they will never pay you back because, hey, at least 60% of that, that went to payroll. Now, if you're saying to yourself, but that umbrella guy, what about the beer buck? Okay, fair enough. But this, these are the real issues with comics. Issues. <laughs> I made it funny. No, but if you look at these, these are the top selling comic books of 2018. And what you'll notice here is this. The issues, they are milestones or they are reboots. These are comic books that you will have a minimum of 20 covers attached to. The pricing range, they go from $10 down to, say, $4.99. In the comic book shops, they pay for this. This is predatory practice. It takes everything it can from them, and they can't sell it. They can't return it. The problem with predatory practices like that is that comic book shops, they bear the brunt of these things, and, well, comic book shops, they close at record number. 50 in 2017. 100, 2018, 200 in 2019, and that, that was all before the beer bug struck. Now, in addition to those numbers and diminishing quality, you can look that up, there are plenty of examples of it, you have top comic creators getting together and denouncing anyone that speaks out about this, calling them quote-unquote comicsgate. That's the thing, too. They would take individual consumers thousands, tens of thousands of them, label them Comicsgate, call that thing a hate group and say, yeah, you folks, you're not welcome in this industry. People like myself that were spending hundreds of dollars a week on comic books, but had the audacity to ask for professional behavior and a good product in return, yeah, you were apparently monsters and your money wasn't welcome there. Additionally, you have comic pros engaging in the harassment of other comic pros, trying to destroy their lives, their livelihoods, and cause them mental duress. In this instance, you had Tom King, the creator that was assigned to Batman and many other DC products, harassing Jay Lee, a huge name, because he made a comic book cover. That's right, he drew a comic book cover and got paid for it. Must make him a monster. Now, during all of this, mental duress creeps in because of what's going on here. And I mean, really, read this along with me. Two weeks ago, June and I took Loki to San Diego to see a special 
specialist. He did not survive due to complications from the surgery. This past Friday was supposed to be a day of mourning. We were back in San Diego to pick up the ashes. We were going to take him to the beach and comfort each other by sharing our favorite stories about our little boy. Instead, a part of the internet I avoid like the plague came barging in. I had companies I'm working for calling me, friends reaching out to me. I'm seeing hate pouring out of strangers' mouths, accusing me of things I have no knowledge of. I'm seeing firsthand how fast lies are spreading. Let me be clear, I'm not part of any group. We never made it to the beach. We spent the entire six hours drive back home on an emotional roller coaster. I'm writing this because I'm angry. These irresponsible tweets are not harmless. They do not just go away. They have real-world consequences. They can take away your job, your life, your memories. June and I were robbed of our special day. So no, we're not all good. This isn't the start of a conversation. This is the end. So please don't drag me into a world I never wanted to be part of, nor will I ever want to be part of. I want to honor Loki by going back to producing art made with love for people who enjoy it for what it is. Something that hopefully brings joy into their lives. Mommy and Daddy miss you so very much, Loki, our love. And that doesn't even include the doxing and the threats. I mean, here, this stuff was pointed at us. Once you know his real name talking about me, it's real easy to find out literally everything about him. So yeah, I get docs, people do background checks, they dig up the obituary of my father and my brother, they dox my parents, everything else, because they're good people. But the question now is, is he smart enough to shut the bleep up, or will you keep harassing people who now know where he lives? We know where you live. You better shut up. My money is that he will double down and put himself and his family at risk. Note my family in there too, by being even more of a harassing a-hole. And then the cops will have to get involved. These people did too. They tried CBS. They tried the DA. They tried the police and the mayor. Jobs will be lost. They tried my job as well. That is a sadly predictable arc here. That's what you get for being a comic book consumer. Now when all of that is said and done, of course you're going to have problems. I mean, how much money can you chase away from an industry that only has 30 to 50,000 consumers before you run out of consumers? And how much talent can you run off before, hey, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel? Now, the beer bug, it didn't do anything in that. It may have accelerated the ramifications, but this stuff, it's been long time in the making. You see DC Comics now. They're laying off individuals, and this, it is a major shakeup. You have the editor-in-chief here, Bob H. That is the upper echelon employee being let go. I mean, we are talking the top dog, as well as several other editors. I mean, we're talking about the big guns there, too, that have been around a lot. They make or break projects. They're being laid off. And Jim Lee, he's being removed from the publishing role. Now, they note in this that several employees, they give names here. Of course, we heard the editor-in-chief, but they also include the editors Mark Dole, Brian Cunningham, and Andy Curry. Andy Curry, too. It's about time that guy was let go. He hasn't just tanked projects. He's tanked an entire label, but that guy, he still had a job. You also have the VP of Marketing, Jonah Whalen. I would say I've never heard of him here, but if the way the marketing's been going, yeah, maybe you should have about faced already. Senior VP, Hank K, and the VP of Global Publishing Initiatives and Digital Strategy, Bobby Chase, they're all out of the publisher. Now, Lee, he remains as the uh, company's uh, chief creative officer, but comicbook.com, they had also learned that he no longer holds the title of publisher. His new role will be to act as a liaison between DC and the other brands of Warner Media. Now, that tells you something there, too. They also note something that's going to be big here. They said that Warner Brothers is in talks to bring in a new general manager from the world of esports to lead the division, but the talks have not yet finalized. I mean, when you get down to the world of esports, you're having some problems, and more cuts are to be expected. 
Now, to put this into perspective, roughly one-third of DC's editorial ranks are being laid off, which is something perhaps we've seen before, but that, that was when the entire industry crashed. And the difference now is that the industry, I don't think it's in the position to rebound from something like this. Now, you also see the majority of the staff of the uh, streaming service, DC Universe, being laid off, but that move, it was widely expected, as Warner Media shifted its focus to to a new streaming service, which is HBO Max. Quote, DC Universe was DOA as soon as the AT&T merger happened. Also a victim of the layoff, DC Direct, the company's in-house merchandise and collectibles manufacturing. Now this division, it's been around 22 freaking years. But this, it's yet another thing that's happened when Warner Brothers consumer products began taking a more active role in DC merchandise. Now a DC spokesman, they declined to comment on all of this stuff, which comes less than two weeks before the planned August 22nd, online event DC Fandom, which uh, was set to showcase stars from DC Films, TV, and comic book world. I mean, like I said, you think about this hit here. We are talking about a major shakeup in the company. This is in one of the companies that we've been told is too big to fail. Well, that, it was never true. Maybe if these people would have listened to the comic book consumers, maybe they could have staved off some of this too. But as it happens, they've been borrowing money, they've been on life support, and now everything's falling apart. But anyway, you tell me what you think about this. And well, what do you think about what's happening? Can you get this back? Let me know. So to close, I want to mention two things. Number one, I want to mention our comic book. But I also want to mention that these people that destroyed the industry, they're moving over to print independently because, hey, they burned all bridges. Now they need you. Now they need your money. And remind them of what they did when they decided to tear the industry down. I also, I want to thank you for showing up. Thank you for participating. You make these endeavors possible. Without you, none of this stuff works. This industry, it forgot it. So many people have. Don't let them forget that either. You never let them forget what they did. But anyway, thank you. I appreciate you. We'll see you soon.